How's it going everyone? My name is Nick Mo, and today we're talking Nintendo Switch. I'm still getting used to saying that new name, but my gut reaction is a bit more positive than when I first heard of the Wii U. In fact, when I first heard the Wii U name, the video game advertising department inside my head became instantly worried about selling the console to confused grandparents. With that in mind, Nintendo Switch is a clean breakaway from the Wii and Wii U branding, as well as the DS and 3DS branding. These naming conventions have been around since 2004 and 2006 respectively, and that's a very long time for any one video game brand. The Switch is a fresh start. The Switch is Nintendo unifying their talented teams of developers who have been supporting two different hardware platforms. The Switch is Nintendo demonstrating how their hardware division can stay relevant in an increasingly mobile and PC-focused games industry. Now I'm not a games industry economist, but I like to pretend to be, and therefore I've devised a bold strategy for the launch of the Nintendo Switch, and I believe this plan could put Nintendo back on track in a very big way. Now that's not to say the Wii U is a complete failure. I personally have thoroughly enjoyed my time with the console, and I believe it has a great library of games but it's high time Nintendo returned to being competitive in the hardware sales race. Doing so will only spur the development of more Nintendo titles, and in the end, that's what we're all here for, right? More classic titles from Nintendo. Alright, let's get down to business. Here are my steps for Nintendo Switch dominance in 2017. Step 1. Launch a version of the console at $299 USD. Pricing a game console is a tricky endeavor. If you set the price too high, you'll lose customers. If you go too low, the console maker has to depend on high software sales to offset losing money on each console, and that can be quite the gamble. $299 is a safe number for a lot of reasons. For starters, it would cost less than the price of a new 3DS and Wii U when purchased together, and since this is a hybrid console, consumers will feel like they're getting a good deal for two systems in one. It's also competitive with the Xbox One and PlayStation 4's most affordable options, yet unlike both of those consoles, the Nintendo Switch doubles as a portable. Again, the hybrid nature really makes the system feel like a deal at $299, and making the Switch feel like a good deal will ensure that more people besides the usual early adopters and Nintendo enthusiasts will purchase the system early, and that early sales momentum is key to success in 2017. Step 2. Bring the big franchises at launch. I know it seems incredibly obvious, but I have to mention it. If the Nintendo Switch is to catch on in 2017, Nintendo needs to bring their heavy hitters early. The Nintendo 3DS launched with three Nintendo first-party games, Pilot Wings Resort, Steel Diver, and Nintendogs Plus Cats. Needless to say, those games are not Mario, Zelda, and Pokemon. And the 3DS hardware launch was sluggish as a result of this lineup. A similar story goes for the Wii U. Nintendo did put out Nintendo Land and Super Mario Bros. U, and that was an improvement over the 3DS launch, but neither of these games set the world on fire. And though I enjoyed New Super Mario Bros. U when it launched, it really was just another New Super Mario Bros. game with very few tweaks to the formula. Now, the good news is there's strong evidence to suggest that The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild will be a Nintendo Switch launch title, and that will help immensely. A similar effect occurred with Twilight Princess on the original Wii. We also know from the Switch sneak preview trailer that Nintendo has an all-new 3D Mario platformer as well as a new Mario Kart title, and history has shown us that these two games can drive system sales. The question becomes, will these games come out closer to March for the launch of the Switch, or will they become holiday 2017 titles? Their release date could be make or break for Nintendo Switch success in 2017. Step 3. Provide quality portable experiences. Although the Nintendo Switch is being marketed as a hybrid console allowing you to play your home console games on the go, Nintendo has also stated that they don't view the Switch as a replacement for the 3DS and that a 3DS successor will eventually come out. Whether or not that's their actual plan or just marketing speak remains to be seen, but I believe pushing the portable aspects of the system early on will be very important for the Switch to succeed. In fact, much like how the Nintendo DS indirectly conquered the Game Boy, removing a long-running Nintendo platform in the process, I believe the Switch will eventually kill the 3DS, paving the way for massive Nintendo Switch sales in the future. 
In order for this to happen, Nintendo needs to focus their internal studios on delivering both home console and portable experiences on Switch, and making true portable experiences will be very important long term. You see, it's easy to see Skyrim on a portable device and get excited, but remember, current 3DS customers are here for games like Pokemon Sun and Moon and Fire Emblem Fates, and Nintendo can't afford to abandon these players. If the many studios of Nintendo can continue to deliver experiences that appeal to both portable players and console players, I foresee a future where some households will have not just one, but multiple Switch consoles, and that will help Nintendo's sales numbers immensely. And finally, Step 4, Dominate Holiday 2017. I mentioned this briefly before, but a key part of the Switch's success in its first year will be nailing that holiday sales window. I believe Nintendo will orchestrate a one-two punch, if you will. Say they put out Zelda in a Mario Kart game right there within the launch window in the spring and the system is off and running. Then they close the year out with the holiday window and they deliver a big deal 3D Mario game. And maybe one more first party title, say a Splatoon remaster or a Smash 4 Ultimate Edition with all DLC included. If they can pull that off, a big launch in the spring followed up by an even bigger first party holiday, then the indie and other third party developers will follow suit to support the growing number of Switch owners, and the system's success will snowball into something greater than what the Wii U was able to achieve. If Nintendo can nail holiday 2017 and close out the Switch's first year with some quality first party titles, then the system's initial success is all but guaranteed. And judging by the interest in projects like the NES Classic Edition, the gaming masses are excited for Nintendo to return to form, and with the Switch, Nintendo has a chance to explode back onto the scene. And there you have it, that's my simple yet effective four-step plan for Nintendo Switch dominance in 2017. Nintendo, feel free to borrow this, I really, I wouldn't mind, just go ahead, just take whatever you'd like. Also, more importantly, I'd like to know what you guys think, what did I miss? What else can Nintendo do to make 2017 the year of the Switch? Be sure to let me know in the comments below. Once again, my name is Nick Mo, Talking Games, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you'd like to be part of more discussions like this one, be sure to subscribe. Alright, I'm out.